Harry and Meghan Markle to sue the king's government. How have the Sussexes been humbled four years after stepping down as working royals? So according to the latest updates, Prince Harry and Meghan have decided to file suit against His Majesty's government. So of course, the British government created the laws that do apply within the UK, and inside the jurisdiction of those laws, they of course take precedence. So the big legal issue right now involving the Home Office, the Department of the UK government, and Meghan and Harry involves how much security the government assigns to VIPs, in particular, of course, Harry and Meghan when they come to visit. So this is technically a civil matter. Prince Harry is convinced that he's entitled to a much higher level of security than the experts at the Home Office have decided that he needs, considering his status and also their analysis of the threat level that he faces. Well, he doesn't agree with their assessment, and so he's seeking a legal ruling on that point. And I'm not an expert in the legal details, but it seems to me like when Harry was a working member of the royal family, which basically is the same as being a senior diplomat within the UK, he was subject to the heightened security protection because a position like that needs it. And naturally, the British government, meaning the taxpayers, foot the bill. Now, it's all part of the diplomatic protection that all countries do extend to any diplomat when inside their country. Well, so when Harry decided that he didn't want to carry out assignments on behalf of the monarch anymore, he gave up that level of security on an individual basis. Essentially, Harry wasn't a working diplomat anymore, so he wasn't eligible for that level of security. But he thinks that he's still at risk of attack when he's in Britain, and so he's disputing the analysis of the Home Office's intelligence services. Thanks to the very sensitive nature of how the intelligence services gather their information, that part of the hearing was not held in front of the camera. From what has been released, which is mostly Harry's opinions on why he deserves a higher level of security than he's got, Harry doesn't have a leg to stand on. His case is incredibly weak. Now, we can summarize it that he feels like he's at risk, but he wants the security services to justify his little feelings. He doesn't care about their risk profile. All he cares about are his feelings. The whole thing, though, is just ridiculous because, I mean, they know the kind of threat level that Harry is facing right now. They know a lot better than he does. All right, so let's look at another similar case, Prince Andrew. While Prince Andrew was a working royal, he had security for himself and his family. But when he stepped back from public duties, he had to either accept the standard security for his family or he had to pay out of pocket for protection for his daughters. Well, he decided to pay himself for that additional security. But one difference is he was also living in the UK. But Harry walked away from his duties, which would have allowed him that kind of additional protection, and he moved away to California, where he's also expected to pay for his own personal protection. In the beginning, Harry wanted the enhanced level of security that he had before in the UK, and he wanted it to just be given to him when he came to visit. And when that was not provided as standard, he had a big problem. The Home Office knows what they're doing, by the way. I mean, they have carefully analyzed the events that Harry has been involved in, and guess what? They've decided most of these threats exist only in his mind. Now, something else that factors into all this is IPP status, because if Harry got the enhanced security level that he wants, then he could possibly use that to validate his claim to be an IPP. Now, an IPP is a person who receives enhanced diplomatic protection, and it's paid for by the government of the country they happen to be in at that time. And if that were to happen, then basically the U.S. government would be responsible for the daily protection of Harry and Meghan and the Invisible Children. After Harry quit his job as a working royal, he and Meghan moved for a little while to Canada, where they got full diplomatic protection in the beginning. But when that was taken away, they moved to California where Harry had to pay for the additional security. The ongoing court cases in Britain could perhaps be a step in the direction of Harry and Meghan getting protection paid for by the taxpayers of the countries they, they reside in. And that sure would save the two of them a lot of money, wouldn't it? Now that's all speculation, but right now the court case is still in progress. And with IPP, he would also get to avoid prosecution while he's in these countries. Now that is something we need to pay attention to. So that would mean that if Harry were in on that mess with Diddy, he couldn't be prosecuted. And what about the women he has hurt? I guess no prosecution for that either. 
I mean, Harry just tries to use the laws to keep his nose clean because the palace doesn't do it for him anymore. And another thing is, if Harry comes to a royal function, he's going to be covered by royal security anyway. If he decides to come visit Britain as a private individual, which is what he claimed he wanted to be when he quit royal duties, then naturally he is responsible for paying for his own security. I just don't understand where he gets off. Why does he believe that he is entitled to benefits, titles, and other stuff for himself and his family from a country that he abandoned, trashed, and doesn't do any work for? I mean, they have just made money off those royal titles. If the UK pays for his and Meghan's lifestyle in the US, the people of Britain are going to go bonkers. The US is never going to do it, though. To be honest, they're not getting anything from British taxpayers. I think hell would freeze over before that could ever happen. So maybe it's time to talk to Harry like the fool he is and explain to him very slowly that when he quit his job and left his country, of course, he lost all those benefits. The discussion is over. He should really just focus on enjoying his new life in his new country. I still don't understand why this is so difficult for Harry to comprehend. When Harry allowed Meghan to sit on that Oprah interview and imply that it was a race issue why Archificial didn't get a title when he was born and didn't say a word, honestly, I lost all respect for him. And at that point, I didn't believe that he really understood the laws and procedures of his own homeland. It looks to me like Harry is stupider than anyone thinks. But he's going to lose in the end and he's going to have to pay the court costs. Now, how is he going to do that? Maybe then it will finally occur to him that when he stopped being a working royal, the benefits also dried up. I mean, it's just ridiculous. The thing is, because of everything he and Megan have done, there's no going back. And so there's no chance of getting those sweet, sweet benefits again. So congratulations, Harry and Megan. You only ruined yourselves. And Harry claims that he's going to appeal. Yeah, good luck, Harry. I don't believe an appeal court is even going to grant him leave to appeal. The judge was very specific. The judge covered every single one of his complaints, and that's why he lost. For an appeal court to grant an appeal, Harry would have to prove that the judge erred in law. And if they don't grant the appeal, then he's going to have to pay everybody's court costs and his own. And guess what? Those court costs ain't going to come cheap. I mean, even to appeal, Harry has to put up the money in case he loses. All right, shifting gears a little bit. So, Easter Sunday. We've marked four years since Harry and Meghan quit the royal family. And since then, they have gone from being beloved to being an absolute laughingstock all around the world, especially in their mission to make it big in Hollywood. And in spite of all the efforts to rebrand, nobody's buying what they got to sell. So we've got six examples of Harry and Meghan being cut down to size by Hollywood. Number one, Jimmy Kimmel dedicated multiple shows to Harry's Todger talk uh, when he talked about applying his mother's favorite Elizabeth Arden cream to his penis. It's a twist on the princess and the pea called the prince and the penis, he said. And in the number two slot, we've got Saturday Blight Live. Well, they did sketches about Megan's character returning to suits. Megan's character has a real struggle balancing her legal career while also caring for an unemployed immigrant as a photo of Harry flashes up there on the screen. Number three, comedian Joe Coy got in on the fun. At the Golden Globes, he said, it turns out that Harry and Megan are still getting paid millions for doing absolutely nothing, and that's just by Netflix. Up at number four, we've got Chris Rock. Well, Chris Rock, of course, he took a few swings. He blasted the two of them for acting like victims. And his comments subtly referred to Megan's allegations during the Oprah Winfrey interview. He said it was basically just some kind of in-law shit. And then, of course, number five, my favorite, South Park. <laughs> oh, so they put Harry and Meghan on a talk show, Good Morning Canada, where the Prince of Canada, aka Harry, is holding up a sign that reads, We want privacy. And then Meghan standing next to him holding a sign that reads, Stop looking at us. Number six, we had Family Guy. In October of 2023, Family Guy had their little fun too. A butler approaches Harry and Meghan while they're sitting by a pool, hands Harry a briefcase with millions for no one knows what. And Harry's response is, oh, put that next to the rest of our millions. And we see Meghan sending text messages on Instagram. I mean, Harry and Meghan thought they were so great and wonderful, but they're not. 
I mean, the thing with Harry and Meghan is sometimes I do find them absolutely hilarious, but sometimes I just really am bothered by them because the rest of the world, we are struggling with real problems. To be honest, I don't think most Americans care at all about any alleged royalty from any country, and certainly not those two. Most Americans that I know, at least, are interested in the world around us, or we're interested in history. Most of us have respect for other people's culture and customs, and that includes any royalty. Our own culture, though, we don't really recognize titles, which makes it all the more ridiculous that Meghan is so proud to use hers. I mean, if that British title is so important to her that she has to cement it next to her name, then maybe she should have remained in the UK, where they actually have a whole 1,000-year history to accommodate it. She claims to be a feminist, and she's so determined to promote Duchess to the American people, it doesn't make any sense. What about using the title Mrs.? That probably wouldn't be okay for her. She is so pretentious, and she's so fake. I mean, she might as well just go stomping around the parking lots with a crown attached to her head, flashing that rictus grin at any photographers who happen to pass by. All right, folks, that is the news of today, and I would love to know what you think, so please leave your thoughts below in the comments. Goodbye, and I'll be back to see you tonight.